What's up guys? My name's Chris and welcome to this quick tutorial about how to make a snowy mountain using Cinema 4D and Octane. Um, so lately I've been making some of these uh, some of these 3D mountain scenes like this one and this one uh yeah and so i just wanted to do a quick tutorial on how to set something like this up and techniques um also if you're seeing this video and you're wondering about this platform maybe you're not but uh just want to invite you guys to check out uh, steampeak.com it's a blogging site built on the steam blockchain um if you don't know what any of that means uh, basically, it's a blogging site where you can earn cryptocurrency for posting your content. Uh, so it's really cool. You should check it out. Um, I've been on here for a long time. And yeah, if you're watching this video, then you probably are interested in some of the same stuff that I'm interested in. And I'd love to see you here. Um, so yeah, just go to steampeak.com, make an account, do a post. If you do make an account and make a post, uh, leave a comment in the comment section below, and I'll hook you up with an upvote and possibly a re-steam if it's not total crap. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so a couple things you're going to need. Um, you're going to need a, a height map. Um, so you can get one off the internet if you're familiar with tools like uh, World Machine or World Creator, then obviously you can just make one. Um, there's plenty online, honestly. Uh, you can just grab one. Um, there's also, uh, I just did a post on Steam the other day and I said there wasn't a make a mountain button. Then I thought about the fact that there kind of is a make a mountain button right here. Um, but it's not a very cool mount. It doesn't have a lot of detail. Uh, so if you really are lazy and don't want to go and look for a height map, I suppose you could use this, but it's not that good. It's better just to get a height map. Um, so you want to create a plane. Let's, uh, make this a little bit bigger. I like rounder numbers than that. And let's make an octane shader. I am going to take this and I'm going to change it from a diffuse to the universal material. And I'm going to make it not metallic. So it's just a shiny white thing. Drop that on our plane. Let's drop a sun in here and Change the direction of it a bit. And open up Octane, and we should just see that we've got a white plane and a sky. Let's take this and also make it gray so that we'll be able to see things on it a little bit better. All right. So now let's open up that material. Grab an image texture and I will browse to height maps. What's in here? Yeah. Okay, and so we need to pipe that through a displacement. This texture is 2K. I think so let's change that level of detail to 2k drop that in here throw this in here 10 centimeters is not going to be enough so let's just pump that up a lot and see what we've got so there we go we've got our mountain that may be a little spiky uh let's let's do it over here Go here into the displacement 165. So you can see we can control uh, how high that mountain is. That's going to become important later to turn this into 
more of a whole mountain range. Um, okay, so that's uh, that's the start. So there's a couple of nodes that are going to be really useful. Let's just take this and dock it over here. And let's move this to maybe about the middle of the screen. And we don't need a lot of space up there. Definitely don't need space down here. And yeah, let's do something like that. Okay, so the really important nodes are going to be this triplanar node, and then also uh, this falloff node. So with this triplanar node, basically what this allows you to do is you can project a map down the individual axes. So you can project something down the x-axis, the y-axis, the z-axis. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to grab two float textures, which are basically just a black and white uh, texture. I'm going to make one of them white, which is 1, and I'm going to make one of them black, which is 0. And I'm going to take the white one, and I'm going to project that down the y-axis. And I'm going to take the black one and project that down the x-axis and the z-axis. All right, so we got Y projecting in, uh, I mean, white projecting in Y and black projecting in X and Z. So if we drop that into the color or the albedo, we have this. Cool, we're done. See you later. Uh, nope, that's, that's a nice chunk of the way there, but that's not everything. Um, but you can see that that, that gets you uh, a lot of the way there. So... Uh, for this sort of look. Uh, but ultimately what we're building up to is we're going to create masks to then pipe textures in here to reveal a sort of rocky texture and then a snow texture. Okay, so that's the triplanar. And within that, you've got a few options. Well, the main, you've got one option really, which is this blend angle. And that's basically like how soft it's going to be a transition between the different axes. So if you adjust this, you can see what that does is kind of give you more or less contrast. So we want this to be pretty small, actually. So that we get some, uh, you know, reasonably sharp edges and kind of like these little small shapes and stuff like that in there. All right, so let's disconnect that. Now let's grab this fall off map and plug that in. Okay, so what this is doing, if we adjust it, well, that's the wrong mode. So right now, this is, um, well, we're not going to use this one, so I'm not even going to waste time talking about that. Ultimately, what we want to do is this normal versus vector 180 degrees, which... Is basically like projecting a, a gradient from the top to the bottom um, of this. So we're getting something along these lines. So if we take this and we modify it a bit, kind of clamp it. So I'm going to grab a color correction node and drop that in between here. And let's go to our gamma. And let's start to manipulate this. Okay, so... We've got something that looks like this. Maybe a little bit more. Okay, so the reason that both of these are useful is you can see on this triplanar node. So we've got this, but there's no. There's not really a separation between 
uh, the snow that's on the mountain and, you know, what would ultimately be the ground plane. And what I would probably want is something that gives me a little bit of distinction, right? So that I could maybe put a different texture on the ground and then have something different on the snow. Basically something that represents the ground and something that represents the snow. Um, so by using both of these, so you can see here, we've got this. Actually, if we take this and let's invert it to give you. And, oops. Come back. Okay, so what this does is it basically kind of gives us like a ground mask, right? So we've got, so white is the area that would be, so if this is a mask, white is going to be opaque and black is going to be transparent. So right now what this does is it says, okay, now you can select this area, um, or select, or what am I trying to say? Uh, Isolate is what I'm, uh, the word I'm looking for. You can isolate this area that's white right here. And we've got a couple of areas up here that are white, but that's fine because that looks like uh, where snow would be anyway. And so we've got like a nice transition between now what would be the ground and then what would be um, ultimately like the mountain. And then there's uh, controls in here where we can manipulate stuff. So you can see here we can kind of eat that this way if we want to make that a little bit more, which is nice. And go the other way, too. So lots of control. So now what we want to do is combine these maps. And so what we're going to do is actually... So how do I want to do this? I want to subtract that from that. I'm going to grab a subtract node and I forget the order that these are supposed to go in so let's just try this order matters for subtraction okay so yep that's uh, that's basically it that's what I wanted so now I've got um, rock and then snow and then ground um, but i might want to let me just think about this i might want to keep those separate if i did want to have a different texture on the ground but anyways so all right so we've got a couple of masks let's just keep moving forward and let's bring in some textures now. This is all, we'll deal with how shiny this is and stuff like that later. All right, so let's drop in another image texture and go back to our textures. We're gonna add some of these real displacement textures. There's a snow in here that I like. So let's grab this guy, say open. Okay, let's grab all of that, and we're going to take this texture and grab a mix, and we can just put anything in here so, so that we can see the masks working. So I'm just going to make this super obvious and just grab a red color. Um, so we'll take this and this, and we're going to mix it with this. So it's basically saying, well, actually, seeing it is going to explain this better. Okay. So you can see we've got the ground, and then this red area is basically rock. And then up here, we've got more snow. Now, the only reason that you'd want to have this uh, between these two different masks is if I wanted 
a different texture on the ground and something, you know, and then something different um, on the rocks. Like basically, you can see that this ground has variation in it. So it's got like little spots of brown in it. But maybe on the texture up here for the snow that's on the mountain, we don't want that. We want that to be more pure white. So what we can do is break this up into sort of like two sections. So we have to kind of make a, do a few adjustments. So let's see what we want to do. So this is what, all right, so that's what that looks like. And so ultimately what I want to do is have this, so what, what I do is have this be my ground mask. And let's just see. Yeah, we want that to be pretty dark. Maybe not that dark. It's a, maybe something like that. Um, and then, so if the ground is going to go there, then I want this mix to, instead of having the combination, to just have this guy. And I want that to be in the opposite order. So let's take this and put it into here. And take this and put it into here. Cool. All right, so that's now the ground texture. And let's uh, fix the scaling on that. So let's grab a transform node and drop that into here. And we'll take this and I don't want to do it too much because the tiling is going to start to show up. But once we've got a full range, that tiling won't be so noticeable. But let's just uh, stick with that for now. Okay, and then let's see. So for the other texture, let's grab another image texture. So this will be maybe the snow texture. So let's go in here. This one look like a bit more white. That one. Let's do the second one. Still has some variation in it, but it's it's more snow basically. Let's see. Hmm. That's still a little. That's quite a lot of variation, and that texture is going to be pretty repeaty. Let's actually just use white color. I'm going to use an RGB spectrum, though, just in case I want to have a little bit of variation in it. That's good for now. Okay, so I'm going to take this and plug this in. I could have just changed the one that I've already got in there, but whatever. All right. So, we can see that's a little blinding white. Let's maybe bring that down just a little bit. All right, we'll make final adjustments afterwards. Okay, so now we've got that little separation happening, um, but we've still got this mask, which is the one that. Um, has the rocks in it. We might want to invert this. We don't want this subtracted version. We just want uh, Hold on, getting lost. Okay, so that's that. So that's just that. And now what I want is to Blend this with the rocks. So I want a mask that's just the rocks, which would be an inverted version of this. Okay, so let's drag that on here. Cool. So now what we want to do is create 
another mixed texture. And we're going to grab this and stick this in here. And then we're going to grab a rock texture. Which... Let's go in here. I'll grab this guy. in here and then use this as the mix then drop that in here and that is not right so let's change the order of these And that is right. Okay. All right. So now, now we've got the three textures. All right. So we've got a rock texture. We've got this pure white, which I'm not really a huge fan of right now. And then we've got the ground texture. That uh, that white is that pure white is not working. Um. So let's maybe instead of the pure white, which is this guy. What if, let's take this and duplicate it, and then let's drop that into here. But then, let's change the scaling on this. Nope, that looks terrible. Why don't we do it? Uh... Okay, so let's do this. Let's take this and let's add a color correction in between here and make this lighter, but not totally white. Okay. And then what I think I want to do, let's go back to this fall off map. Let's increase the the gradient spread on this because you remember if you remember we have basically like a little gradient that's separating these and right now it's looking like that transition is a bit too harsh it was kind of going from this darker sort of off-white to this really brilliant white this also has a little a bit to do with the fact that this is all still totally shiny let's maybe deal with that before we make these adjustments um so let's go to uh the specular and let's just turn down the intensity of that. So that's going to make the reflections not as strong. And then we can increase the roughness by quite a bit. Okay, so we still need to... Okay, now we can make that adjustment, but know that we're actually affecting things in the right way. So let's go back to this fall-off map, maybe the color correction, and let's... Reduce the contrast there. So now it's a little bit more. And let's see. Okay, that really helps quite a bit. Okay. All right, so that's looking, looking all right. All right, so let's deal with this rock texture. Let's grab a transform. That's right here. Make some adjustments to that. Make that smaller, quite a bit smaller. And then I'm also gonna grab a color correction node between this. Oops, I missed. Okay, so let's drag that in here. Okay, and it's gonna go, it's gonna go right here. And basically, I want to just make this a bit darker, not that dark. Mm. I don't know why the brightness got set to zero. Okay, so let's bring this down a bit. So yeah, maybe about that dark. All 
Okay. Let's take this. Maybe see if we can push this a little bit more. I guess we probably want to adjust the gamma. This doesn't seem to be doing anything. I think it might be not updating. Let's just refresh this. Okay. Sometimes when you get more nodes, the live viewer can stop updating, which I think is what it's doing now. Or I'm just doing this wrong. Hmm. That seems like the right thing. Let's see. Yeah, the live viewer is not updating. That's annoying. Let's do this. Let's completely close it and then kick off another one. Hmm. This is weird. All right. Well, that's definitely not. Or, I think I know what I just did. I think when I was messing with this fall off, I screwed something up. Okay, so let's see. Troubleshooting time. Struggle. So let's just put this to something super extreme. And then let's go to this fall off map and start messing with it. Okay, so the live viewer is updating. What I think happened. Was. What I was thinking is that I actually completely overwrote that with uh, with these adjustments. Okay, I can see a slight change, but I think it's mostly the like this guy up here that's uh showing through. So like if I disconnect that. Yeah, so that's all completely white. And so now if I make adjustments to this, they should show maybe. Okay, I'm breaking a lot of stuff. Okay, I don't want to spend too much time struggling with that, but uh, yeah, I think I screwed something up somewhere, because this is basically having no effect anymore, so I think the only thing that's coming through is this guy, and I think that has to do with this. It does, okay. There we go. That's what I wanted. Okay, so I wanted this to basically go from kind of more texture to more just white at the top of the mountain. Or rather, this one. With, I kind of like it like that with it just being white, though. But with this, with that color correction. Okay, so we're back on track now.
Cool. All right. So now we've got this one mount. Um, and that's 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 basically it. So some combinations of masks. So let's just kind of because that was a lot of struggling. So let's uh do a quick overview. If I can make sense of this now. Um, the main components though are because there's a bunch of like stuff in here that ultimately is just an adjustment, like this invert or get rid of this guy. Um, these different color correction nodes. Uh, but yeah, so we've got this displacement, and then we've got our triplanar node, and then we've got this fall off map. And we're using those to create masks um, for three areas of isolation, which is like a rock part, a mountain snow part, and then a ground snow part. And wrong one ground snow, mountain snow. Um, so if we just wanted to have the same snow on here, then we'd only need one of these masks. But this just allows for a little bit more flexibility. Okay, so that's the whole material. All right, so now we've got our one mountain. So something that's interesting to note is now if I select this plane and I start to scale this, if I scale this up, then the same, the same level of displacement will not be... Um, because it's gonna it's gonna map this to the whole plane, so how much it's displacing this upward is consistent. So if the plane gets bigger, what it looks like is the mountain gets sort of wider, all right. So and if the plane gets smaller, then the mountain gets more pointy. And so since our texture, our, our material is based on uh, the dimensions of the mountains, uh, then that's gonna update accordingly right so because uh we're projecting it down the actual geometry so as we make this bigger and smaller then we're going to get different looking mountains all right all right so let's just undo this a few times that's our base so now if we take let's dock this again Okay, so now if we take this uh, plane and we stick that into a cloner, so let's go into the, let's get smaller. Let's go into our cloner, let's make a grid array, and we don't need any clones in the y axis up and down. Um, and let's also add a random effector and we want this effector to affect not well yeah position as well as scale and we want the scale to be uniform we could make it not uniform but i'm just gonna make it uniform we don't need any um position changes in the y direction all right so let's just uh drop this into the cloner and you can see now what we got. So now this has been repeated a bunch of times. So now let's work with this cloner. Increase the size. So we also actually want to randomize the rotation. So let's bring this up to 360. Okay, so now you can kind of see where we're growing with this, but right now this is all the same scale. It's, it already has a nice uh, amount of variation and randomness, but we can get even more by changing the scale. I don't think it matters which way we go. So we're gonna make some big ones and some small ones. Let's go maybe about there. Okay, and so now you can see what we've what we've got here. All right, so then we can just mess with the cloner, add more clones if we want, increase the size of this, 
in both dimensions. Let's just look at the whole picture we've got here. All right, so I think we want to increase this more this way. Maybe add palms in there. And then you can start to think about framing up a shot. Uh, let's maybe bring this. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. What I meant to do was, no, I want this to be maybe bigger. And maybe this one smaller. This way. Don't want that shot. It's got a little bit of a thing right there. So let's ignore that. Let's go ahead and make this a bit bigger now. Okay. Oh. Slow down. Maybe try and find something with a nice foreground, middle ground, and that's really screwing things up for us. Okay. All right, so maybe this is a good arrangement. We can change the sun direction to get some more variation in here. And if we wanted to do, where is the sun? Let's bring the sun down a bit. So another thing we can do is go into the random um the random effector and just change the seed get some different arrangements that's just going to re-randomize things okay i like the way the light hits that one big one in the way is kind of annoying so anyways um at this point it's just really finding a good composition and uh you know making a nice shot so you want something that has quite a bit of depth i think i'm going to vary the scale more Let's 
So we have some really big ones and some smaller ones. So this this could have a lot of depth. All right, so that actually is looking all right, but let's let's do something. Let's take our sun. Let's bring that over here. Maybe about right there. Yeah. Bring it down a bit. So we get something more dusky. Like so, maybe a little bit over here. That kind of gets rid of my light where I liked it on that mountain. It's gonna be a little bit more this way. All right, that's looking all right, maybe touch. Okay, so now we've got this kind of one, two, three into the background. That's pretty nice. Um, so we can kind of get a good feeling of the depth. Let's go in here now. And you can see we have this ground plane showing up in the back. That's no bueno. So let's adjust the ground start angle, move that down a little bit so we can just see sky. And then what I'm going to do is add some fog in here. And let's start by making that really dense. I'm going to change the absorption to be basically white. And I'm going to leave this scattering where it is right now, but I'm going to take this phase and dramatically push that this way. Um, so what this basically does is kind of like say from the light source, how much is the light source, I mean, how much is the light going to, how much is the light scatter going to fall off, you know, sort of as it moves through that um so we want it to kind of fall off quite a bit so let's uh put that pretty high like 0.98 and okay so that's where that is and then i want to take this volume step the length and i bring this down no so we want to keep this pretty high and then let's start to mess with this And so then it's just a bunch of tweaking. Um, let's actually go into this scattering. Okay, this maybe I get like a little less. Yeah, a little bit more subtle, not that much. Okay. So just tweaking some of these parameters. It's kind of beyond the scope of this tutorial to get into what all this stuff does. Um, but I just kind of want to leave you guys with something that looks like a, a whole picture. And if you are familiar with this stuff, then you've kind of got a decent grasp. 
Um, so let's change our uh, rendering from direct lighting to path tracing, which is going to give us something a little bit more accurate. Let's go into our light. It's kind of okay right there, but that's like just too blown out. So maybe let's bring this down some. Let's see. I like that light shape right there, but let's see what else we can do. Pretty nice. Um, let's add an octane camera. Look through it. Turn on post production. Turn on the camera imager. Go into post production and blur that glare of it. You can leave a little hint of it. Um, let's see. How's the boom power? We don't really need very much bloom in this. It's already pretty bloomy. Okay, let's go into the imager. Uh, let's use one of these response curves. Probably not that one. There's one in here that I really like. That looks pretty nice. I think it was this one. It's kind of adding some coolness into the shadows, which uh, is a nice contrast here. Let's bring this down a bit to something like that. Let me turn on adaptive sampling. I'm still not super familiar with what this AI light does if it speeds things up, but I'll just turn it on from time to time. All right, so let's let this cook for a second. Maybe make this a little bit bigger. Let's see what we've got. Um, so that's the that's the technique, pretty much. Um, so yeah, uh, that's that's really it. Um, from here on, it's just play with it until you get something that you like. Um, there's one more step that I'm not going to go into here, which is replacing the sky, because uh, that takes quite a long time. This is already pretty long. But, um, but yeah, that's the basic idea. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them down in the comments. And thanks for watching. Later.